वेलकम टू माई चैनल फी कंसेप्ट सी एच एफ वी विल सी द एक्सपेरिमेंट ऑफ बैंड गैप एनर्जी ऑफ जर्मैनियम डायोड यर वी विल सी द एम अपैरेटस थियोरी फॉर्मूला सर्किट डायग्राम प्रोसीजर ऑब्जर्वेशन टेबल ग्राफ कैलकुलेशन रिजल्ट एम टू डिटरमाइन द एनर्जी गैप ऑफ जर्मैनियम अपैरेटिस फाइव वोल्ट डीसी सप्लाई 0 to 2 volts DC voltmeter, DC microammeter, rheostat, water bath, glass tube, thermometer, diode, and connecting wires. We will see the theory. The important energy bands in the solid are. first is the valence band the energy band which is formed by grouping the range of energy levels of the valence electrons or outermost orbit electrons is called as the valence band valence band is present below the conduction band as it is shown in this figure the electrons in the valence band have lower energy than the electrons in the conduction band the electrons present in the valence band are loosely bound to the nucleus of the atom second important energy band is the conduction band the energy band which is formed by grouping the range of energy levels of the free electrons is called as conduction band generally the conduction band is empty but when you supply external energy the electrons in the valence band jumps into the conduction band and then they become free electrons the electrons in the conduction band have higher energy than the electrons in the valence band the conduction band electrons are not bound to the nucleus of the atom third one is the forbidden band the energy gap which is present between the valence band and the conduction band by separating these two energy bands is called as the forbidden band or the forbidden gap forbidden gap plays a major role for determining the electrical conductivity of a material based on this forbidden gap The materials are classified into three types. First is the insulator, which has a very large band gap. Second, you can say is the metal, where the valence band and the conduction band overlap, and hence the band gap energy is zero. Third is the semiconductor, whose band gap energy lies in between that of the metal and the insulator. so now when we speak of semiconductors the semiconductors they are of two types intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors again extrinsic semiconductors are classified into n type semiconductor and p type semiconductor and now when you join the p type semiconductor and the n type semiconductor we get the pn junction diode so here the p type region is joined with the n type region the pn junction is formed so the region where the p type and the n type semiconductors are joined is called pn junction so it is a kind of boundary between the p type and the n type semiconductor this pn junction forms 
a most popular semiconductor device known as diode in semiconductors at low temperatures there are few charge carriers to move so the conductivity is quite low however when you increase the temperature more number of charge carriers get sufficient energy to be excited to the conduction band so this actually increases the conductivity to determine the energy band gap of a semiconducting material we study the variation of its conductance with temperature in reverse bias the current flowing through the pn junction is quite small it is called as a reverse saturation current and this current is due to the minority charge carriers the concentration of this charge carriers depends on the band gap energy e sub x g the saturation value which we will denote as i sub x s this is a reverse saturation current it depends on the temperature of the junction diode formula the reverse saturation current is is given as a into t square into e raised to minus eg by kt a is a constant we rearrange this equation take t square on the other side in the denominator then taking the log on both sides this is log to the base e you can convert it into log to the base 10 by multiplying through uh, with the 2.303 this is a constant this term we will denote as c and now we can plot a graph of i uh, log of is upon t square versus 1 by t from which we will get a slope if we rearrange this equation we can find out the band gap energy that is minus 2.303 into k into the slope of the graph where k is the boltzmann constant the value of boltzmann constant is 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 joules per kelvin this is the circuit diagram we can see the pn junction diode it is conduct is it is connected in the reverse bias mode the n side the n side of the di diode is uh, connected uh, to the positive terminal of the battery and the p side is connected to the negative terminal of the battery you have a microammeter and a voltmeter and this rheostat is to vary the voltage the diode is kept in a test tube which is surrounded by water and later on we will be heating the this diode procedure the first part is obtain the reverse bias characteristics of the given germanium diode at room temperature so this will be done at room temperature will determine its reverse saturation current is at room temperature in the second part we will uh, keep the reverse bias voltage quite sufficient to give a saturation current then we will note the values of the reverse saturation current is as we increase the temperature t note that uh, do not exceed the temperature above 60 degrees celsius otherwise the diode will get damaged then we will plot a graph of log of is upon t square versus 1 by t then we'll find the slope and we'll determine the energy band gap of the semiconductor so in the first part this is the measurement at room temperature room temperature is noted down as 29 degrees celsius and we get these readings as you increase the voltage the current increases as 2 4 6 8 here also it is continued the voltage is increased 
we can see the current is increasing and later on it becomes constant or it is saturated further increase in this voltage will not increase this current so this is happening at room temperature second part we will measure the uh, reverse saturation current at different temperatures we will keep the voltage constant at 1.36 volts and we are changing the temperature you can see 29 35 40 45 degrees that way we take till 60 degrees and we will note down the current it is increasing this temperature is in degree celsius converted into kelvin find out 1 by t calculate 1 by t also calculate t square and then you can find the log uh, to the base 10 of i square upon t square which is we are getting negative as you are getting negative you will get a straight line in the fourth quad, uh, quadrant this is log of is upon t square and here on the x axis is 1 by t we get the slope about minus 3125 the slope we can substitute here we can we want the answer in electron volts so convert the joules into uh, electron volt by dividing by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 Boltzmann constant is also substituted as 1.38 into 10 raised to minus 23 and we get the band gap energy as 0.62 electron volt so the result is that the energy gap of germanium is 0.62 electron volt these are some of the e resources that you can refer thank you for watching this video